Hey guys, how's it going? So this is Josh with Josh the Techie, and in this video, um, this is actually the first episode of a series I'm going to be making on Windows Server and So basically, in this video, what we're going to be doing is making the basics of Server 2012. And if you are a subscriber of mine and you've never used Windows Server um, or anything like that, I'm literally going to go over virtually everything in the basics so that you will know what I'm doing, um, and I'm going to try and make it as less as confusing as I can. So in this, as this is the first video, we're, we're going to want to actually configure um, the main server. Um, this is because when you have a fresh install of Windows Server, you need to set up a server name, uh, you need to set it a static IP address, and you need to obviously make sure it's up to date, um, and a couple of other little things that we're going to do as well. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this annoying message. For some reason, my arrow is playing up. So I'll be back in a sec, and then we're going to actually start to configure Windows Server. Okay, right, so I got rid of that message now, um, and as you can see, what I did is I loaded up the server manager main window. Um, you can do this by pressing this little um, server manager icon in the bottom left-hand corner. As you know, this is server 2012, so there is no start uh, start button unlike previous versions of the server, so 2008 um, and 2000, um, I think it was 2002, I think. <laughs> um, but anyway, the great thing about Windows Server 2012 um, against 2008 is that Server 2012 comes up with this really nice um, feature list here that says first thing you need to do is configure the local server, add roles and features, we'll get onto them, don't worry, um, and add other servers to manage. We're not really going to go into that, but it is something that if you're wanting to get into servers and it's something you definitely want to look into, and create a server group. Again, we're not going to really do these two, um, however, I may do them as bonus videos once we've gone through the main basics of setting up the server. So as you can see here, it says uh, configure this local server. So let's click on that and let's uh, look at what options we have here and what we can change to actually um, configure it with, really. <laughs> um, okay, so at the top here, it says computer name. Now, this by default is set to win q94gd2r blah blah blah. We obviously don't want our server to be called that. That is a right pain in the ass name. Um, to have, <laughs> we don't want to. If we're on another computer, we want to be able to access our server quick. Um, preferably use a name, a memorable name um, that either you or your client or customer can use. So if they want to access the server, then they can. Uh, they'll know the name, um, and it's easy to uh, remember. Really. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that simply by clicking on this word here, and this will bring up the system properties window. Now you can obviously get to this via control panel. Um, Virtually the same window here as in, in Windows 7. Um, very, very similar anyway. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit this little change button just here. And where it says computer name just here, what we're going to do is we're going to change this. So what I'm going to call this is I'm going to call it SERV01. Um, I like to put numbers in them because when dealing with multiple servers, um, it's really good to be able to know to be able to identify them. Obviously, if you're more advanced and looking up setting up servers, you might want to call this um, DC for maybe a domain controller, but obviously I don't want to get into too much confusing stuff, but for now we're just going to call this SERV01, so server1. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click OK, and then this will take a second to apply these changes. And as you can see, it's wanting us to restart our computer, but we're going to click OK, and then close, and then restart later. We're going to do the whole restarting in one big jump, so we can do several things in one restart. So as you can see here, we want to make sure that the firewall is on. Firewall, public, on. That's good. Remote, de uh, remote management. This is basically allows us to use uh, other software to manage the server. Um, again, this will probably be covered in a bonus video. Um, however, it's not something we're going to be going over um, in the basics of setting up a whole entire Windows server network. Uh, remote desktop, if you want to have this, um, if you want to have a, maybe a server running and you want to be able to access it via um, a remote desktop connection, then obviously you just need to tick allow remote connections here and then you can use port 3389. Is it 3389? Remote desktop, RDP? I can't remember which. Uh, that uses now, um, but basically um, you just need to allow remote users there, and uh, as you can see, uh, a firewall exception will be enabled. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if it tells, doesn't tell you what port, but anyway, tick that and then click apply, and OK, and then obviously you can access that via um, RDP, so remote desktop connection or 
pretty cool, or whichever one you want to go with. Um, so uh, as you can see here, we've got an Ethernet connection at the moment. Now we've got internet access. This is because well, I'm doing this all in a virtual machine. Um, so this was a bridge adapter to my main PC. But we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this link here and we're gonna create something called a static IP address. Now one thing that's gonna come in really handy um, when you know creating the video uh, or going on to the next part is we need to t I need to tell you what a DHCP server is. Basically. Um, First of all, you need to know what an IP address. IP stands for Internet Protocol. Um, an IP address is a, um, not necessarily unique, but um, at the time, um, a number, basically like a number for your PC, um, a unique number on the network that will identify your PC. That's basically what um, an IP address is. Um, you've got a public IP and you've got a private IP. Public IPs are like 86.22.4. 203 and a common internal IP um, would be 192.168.1.1 um, .1 which is a class C or you got 172.16.0.0 um, and then to 172.32.255.255 uh, and then you got class A which is 10.0.0.0 to uh, 10.255.255.255 yeah. Um, so far, it got a bit confusing, but basically, there's three levels of classes of IPs. You don't really need to worry about that at all. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that you probably recognise the 192.168.1.1 is that's pretty much what most home users routers um, are set to. Um, and if you are learning about servers, you surely must have some sort of previous knowledge about internal IPs and things like that. But if not, don't worry. I'll definitely go over that. Um, within the next couple of videos, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a static IP address here. So we're going to do that by clicking on uh, the IPv4 here. Now we're only going to be worrying about IPv4. We're not going to be going into IPv6 at the moment. Um, IPv4 is still the most popular popular one to be used, um, but there are obviously transitioning over to IPv6. Um, but not to worry at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here with our network um, connection. As you can see, I only got one. Um, Nick in this card, uh, Nick's a uh, network interface card um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to right click on this and click properties and we're going to go to IT, uh, IT uh, Internet Protocol version 4 okay here and we're going to click properties and we're going to use the following IP address now this is basically um, the IP address that we're going to set our server um, so that we can access it on other machines if we need to um, and obviously you don't want not the IP address of a server changing and that can ca cause so many issues it's easy just to have one and it's easy to set I mean once this is once you type in these boxes here that's it that's all you need to worry about you got a static IP then so let's have a look at how to do this so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my IP um, as a class C IP but I'm gonna make this as 192.168.1.10 and the subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0 um, and basically the default gateway is the gateway of my router out of the network which is my physical router downstairs um, which is my main house one so uh, that's 192.168.1.1 um, the reason why I couldn't go with the class A IP here um, and change the subnet to just 255 because that's what it need to be to be class A. Um, basically, you can't have the default gateway on a completely different IP scheme. Just doesn't work. Um, so for DNS servers, we're going to use uh, 127.0.0.1. Uh, reason behind that is because the server we're going to be using will be our DNS server. Um, we don't need to worry about an alternate one. We're just going to use this as it is and click OK. And we're going to click close. And pretty much there we go. Now you notice in the bottom right corner we have no internet access. That's because we've just changed our uh, DNS servers. Um, that's pretty much why there's no internet at the moment. But we will sort that out in a second, um, or definitely in the next video. Um, last installed updates. Um, I'd recommend doing the updates for now, as this is just a tutorial. I'm not going to be worried about you know putting the updates and things that are on here. But if it's a server, main server you're running, I would highly suggest making sure that every single possible update is on that server. And also, if you are building a server, um, make sure before you install the server operating system, you've got the latest BIOS updates and things like that. Obviously, 
if you're running a server, don't try and upgrade the BIOS because if it fails, then you've just ruined the whole system. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much it for the first video. Um, in the next video, we're going to be looking at what have I got on my notes here: uh, ADDS, Active Directory and Domain Services. So um, we're going to be looking at um, DNS server, so domain name server, which will fix our internet issue down here. Um, and Active Directory which will allow us to set up users for our network and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one which will be part 2. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you want to see more from this uh, series then definitely subscribe. And if you've got any questions about the server stuff then just drop a comment below and I'll try my best to answer it um, as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.